click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. If you remember, we are right now in the module number 3 where we are learning design of those components which are experiencing static loads. So, in the last lecture, we have seen a numerical based on the design of quarter joint. If you remember, we have divided that numerical into three parts. right? In current session, we are going to look at the design considerations of knuckle joint and the formula associated with it. Design aspects of knuckle joint. We already have studied this kind of component in the subject of computed machine drawing. There, we had drawn the component, we had gone for the assembly. But after assembly, we should know what are the failure criteria. If you remember the same thing I had mentioned in the beginning of the uh, this subject, where we need to identify the working of the component, working of the machine component, so that we can identify the failure criteria. So, if you see, this particular thing is called I end. And this is called fork end. This is pin. This is collar. And this is simply a pin. Now, the thing is, we need to understand about the assembly. We know that this particular eye end is slided inside this so that the holes of these three are match. They are concentric. Through those holes, this particular pin passes. So one thing is clear that the diameter of these holes and the outer diameter of this pin will be same, irrespective of the tolerances which we are going to consider. But the basic size of these holes and this outer diameter of pin will be same. So this pin will be inserted that will pass through this section first, then this section and then this section. To lock this pin, there is a provision made that is called collar. This collar will also cover up this area of the pin and to make it lock, we will use this as the locking pin. So this particular knuckle joint is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 components. So why do we use knuckle joints? As I have explained it in the previous slide and previous problem, we have always a machine end with us. And we always have a motor end with us. Motor end actually supplies the rotational energy which is to be given to the machine energy or machine component. And to connect them we use different kind of joints. And such a kind of joint is a knuckle joint. So one of the ends of your eye will be given to either machine or the motor. And similar end of forked end will be given to either the corresponding component. And so that the translation or C, the rotational motion of motor will be transmitted through this knuckle joint to the machine. And that's why this particular assembly we need to consider. Now once we are aware of the functioning of this, we know, we know that they are going to experience torque. Let us keep torque aside for some time. Let us say that they will experience tensile loading or axial loading. So the components will majorly fail in axial loading. So, our scope of the consideration is axial load and the failure that may occur due to axial load. Let us look at the assembly part. This is how the assembly is done. Like I had said, this is your eye end. This is your forked end. This is the whole pin. This is the collar. And there is a provision made for passing the locking pin. Now, when the axial loads act on them, they will try to tear apart not only this pin, which is sandwiched between these two, but also these individual eyes which are provided on eye end as well as the fog tin. If they experience some failure, the failure will like be this, and it will be due to the tensile loading. So, this end of eye, which is kept apart from the diameter of its inside hole, may face the 
failure intention or the pin will uh, experience the failure the only difference is this may experience the failure intention or in crushing but the pin may experience it due to shear or the pin will experience it in bending that is how through the working of the component we can identify the failure mode of them so when we are going to design for this particular joint we are going to design them considering tension on tensile strength crushing strength shear strength as well as bending strength now we are going to look at the important formulae which are required to understand to analyze or design this kind of knuckle joint now let us divide this kind of formula into three parts again like we have done it in uh, cotter joint the same thing we are going to do for the knuckle joint let us start with the knuckle pin we will design knuckle pin separately then we will design the forked end and then we will design the eye end or sequence can be interchanged in the beginning we must consider the rod diameter rod is something which is provided for both if you can see here this particular thing is nothing but rod as well as this particular thing is nothing but rod so rod for both the ends will be having the same diameter doesn't matter if it is the forked end or the eye end it is going to have the same diameter and that's why we will begin with the rod we know that the rod if it has to fail it will fail under the tensile loading and that's why you have to consider the tensile strength so the formula is made up as force or the load axial load is equal to the projected area of the rod where d is the diameter of the rod into its tensile strength so your finding here will be diameter d for the rod next thing we will go part by part so first part comes to us which is knuckle pin design now we know that design uh, or the knuckle pin may fail in double shear or it may fail in bending we know that it's the double shear and that's why the axial load will be given by the twice the projected area where dp is the diameter of the knuckle pin and is the shear strength many a times it was found that or it can be assumed that the diameter of the knuckle pin is almost equal to the diameter of rod next thing we'll go for the length of pin now here length of pin we will consider as the breaking or the crushing so or we can say bending also we will go for the bending criteria here we had started with the shear let us go for the bending because we have to consider the pin for both the things so there axial load will be equal to the projected area where dp is the diameter of pin and length is l is the length of pin into the breaking or into the bending strength so that is given by sigma b it was again found that length of the pin is almost 1.25 times the diameter of the original rod next formula set is for checking pin under the bending now like we have considered that if it may fail either in shear or bending let us see if it is safe or not so the empirical formula which is already derived we are going to use it so maximum bending will be given by half the load into this projected area where t1 will be mostly equal to two third of the diameter d that will be 0.75 times d after substituting these values we have to use this bending relation where bending stress will be equal to maximum bending divided by the section modulus now when we find it out using the given formula we can know the diameter and there we can do the checking work of course this particular part will be illustrated during the numerical solving on knuckle joint here if somehow we find that it is failing it is not safe in that case the only remedy is we have to increase the pin diameter dp next part the second part of this numerical will be based on i end or rod end design in the beginning only we will find out the diameter of i end so that will be d1 so p is equal to the projected area d1 minus dp into the length into the allowable stress because we are considering that it is failing under tension it is found that 
d1 is almost equal to twice the diameter of the rod second thing is we will consider that it is failing under shear and if it is safe in shear we will say that the problem or the product is safe and that's why it is a safety check by means of shear and for that formula we are going to use is axial load is equal to twice because we know that it is going to fail under double shear the projected area into its length into shear strength if it fails here we have to go back and change the diameter of i which one which is d1 we will increase it we will see whether it is safe again in this or not and we will keep on repeating till we get the safe diameter the next set of equations is the forked end of the joint in which the force equation is given again in terms of d1 minus dp into 2t into the tensile strength now dear friends we already have figured out the dimensions for the i end and we know that the dimensions of i end and the forked end are the same or what you can say is when we combine two i ends we will get generally the we know that the dimensions the prominent dimensions for forked end and the i end are same and that's why we already have found out the values for the dimensions of i end which we are going to verify in this so your forked end is basically safety check You are going to have safety check. Safety check will be done in three steps. The first step we will find whether it is safe in tension or not. If it is safe in tension, there is no doubt that your I end is also safe in tension. If it is safe in shear, no doubt that your I end is also safe in shear. The formula remain the same. The only thing is we are going to check it for the forked end. The last thing is we will going to check for the crushing strength of this particular thing. So the formula is given, all the parameters will be given, we have to verify, we have to confirm it whether this is the safe crushing strength it has or not. So there we will end with the uh, problem of uh, the knuckle design or this, are, this is the summary of the formula that we are going to use for the design of knuckle design, knuckle joint. In next video we will be dealing with the numerical based on knuckle design or knuckle joint design. We will divide that numerical into three parts for the convenience. So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to eKida. Thank you.